Good morning everyone. A very warm welcome to Christchurch this morning. The welcome is warmer than the building is. So it's <laughs> lovely to see you all here. Uh, today is Homeless Sunday, a um, time in the church's year when we pray for all those who are homeless, whether rough sleeping, sofa surfing or refugees of whatever kind. And we pray for those who are preparing for the winter months, those involved in our own night shelter and across the city in that response, giving thanks for all the work that has happened because of COVID, but also knowing that there is a long way ahead. Just as we begin our worship as well today, um, on a very different note, it gives me great pleasure to publish Bands of Marriage. Firstly, between Daryl Jamie Flynn and between Helen Marie Rawlinson, both of this parish church, both for the second time of asking. So if any of you know of any reason in law why these two may not marry one another, you are to declare it. And we pray for Daryl and for Helen in the days and weeks ahead. We'll join in the words that are in bold on the order of service. Do sit or stand as is comfortable for you. But as we begin, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. As we offer ourselves in God's presence, we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to take a seat for a moment and just like I wonder if you might like to come forward and just say a little bit about what's been happening recently. So for those of you who have not yet met them, Jan and Clive are our night shelter coordinators. You can slip your um, careers up if it helps. Just wondered if you'd like to say a little bit about what's been happening over the summer, tell us about what's in the pipeline okay. for the coming months and the winter. Um, so good morning everyone. Um, there's been, as you can imagine, quite a lot going on. We closed the night shelter down at the end of last season with just five days left to go. We were closed down sort of formally by the council because they'd assured us that everyone who was currently sleeping out rough um, was going to be accommodated as of that night. That was a Monday, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And, um, mm. So they, the council magically housed 23 people locally. That was into bed and breakfasts, um, individual flats and local homeless shelters. I think they kind of move people from the shelters into flats and move uh, lots of kind of shimmying around of different individuals. Um, over the summer, those people have remained there, and the Ark and Mustard Seed have been doing a, a, a sort of set up a kind of delivery service for food, and the food bank from, from the Olive Branch were doing parcels. Um, and so, before we knew it, it's kind of like time to start preparing for opening up again. The current uh, national guidelines are that night shelters aren't to open, they're to remain closed because of the communal nature and the, the high risk environment. So we've kind of decided to open slightly earlier and to run an evening support cafe really. So we'll be offering everything that we did apart from the overnight facility. Running alongside that, the council have got extra funding in place, uh, which will take them through to the end of March, which is also the end of our season. And they are announcing formally, I think this week, we're going to get a bit more detail, but there is going to be um, an emergency accommodation available in Lancaster and Morecambe for anyone found without anywhere to sleep. So our thinking was we do still have regular people who 
come to us just for a meal anyway because they're lonely, isolated, socially excluded. And we felt that that was probably going to be even more the case this season because of how things are generally just out in the community with you know, curfews and early closing and people isolating and such. So we're going to open and just test the water really and we're kind of, things are changing week by week so we haven't yet got a new name finalised but we've got some suggestions. So any suggestions about what we could call ourselves? We did think of um, Night Support Project but the council uh, didn't like that too much because they thought it might be a bit misleading. People might think that we're going to be open through the night, which was a fair point. So. We, we will find out more about what the council's longer term strategy is on Thursday. Jill, Harry and myself will be uh, participating in a, an online meeting to find out exactly what the council and other agencies locally have, will have in place and how we can best fit into that. It might be that we just carry on with an evening cafe which will give people some more way to go, some company in the evenings which I think is going to be difficult for a lot of people um, because they're getting longer as the, as the uh, night's drawing and uh, it, it might involve food, you know, uh, some food deliveries or uh, just a change in the way we operate but I'm sure there will still be a need for some of the things that we've been providing over the years uh, and we'll, we'll fit in as best we can really. It's all a bit of an unknown quantity because um, the staff at Edward Street seem to think that towards December, January time um, there's going to be more people losing their jobs when the furlough ends and when the um, rent arrears and the evictions go through the court process there's going to likely be um, quite an explosion of people going to be sort of without housing. Um, but in theory, what would like to happen is if someone did turn up in dire need on the night and we were in the out of hours team, then things should be in place. And if they aren't, then at least we can flag up that their, their new system isn't quite working. Without yeah. wanting to be too mm -hmm. <laughs> There's an, a lady that I sometimes talk to, a young woman, who is sleeping in a tent at the moment. Um, I have suggested she goes to Edward Street, because Car the Reverend Carol suggested that. Is that still the right advice? Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think there are between maybe six or seven people who are currently still sleeping out. Don't really know the details as to why, but I think they are the people with more complex needs and are reluctant to kind of engage. And well, she, she said she's been turned out of her accommodation because the land in more because the landlord had a tenant to move in, and I think she was quite a compliant sort of a person. Right. And, uh, she's only young. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so if I see her again, I'll read me and say that there, there will be accommodation for her yeah. overnight, but it won't be here. Yeah, uh, and Edward Street is the best place to yeah. to say okay. it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for Jan and Five? Is, is Edward Street is Edward Street open and functioning? Edward Street's open and functioning. Um, they've got a different system in place because they're limiting it. I think they've gone up to four people in at once, uh -huh. rather than everyone just turning up and being in the day loop. Mm -hmm. um, and apparently, it's working really efficiently. They're in. They're allowed in for three quarters of an hour, so they've got time to have something to eat, use the wash facilities, use the phones, computers, and things like that. And, Phil, who's the manager, said it, it seems to be kind of working really e efficiently because they know they've got that pocket of time. So, They're also oh, oh, sorry, having said that, as the weather changes and goes colder, he's unsure because obviously he doesn't want people to be just sat outside in the freezing cold or wet waiting to come in. So they might try and redesign 
the space so that we've got somewhere where people can shelter and wait. So. Uh, yeah, also they're uh, providing a space for, is it the art? Yeah. Who are pro uh, providing meals there? And um, I think that's on a Friday. The art have yeah. stopped running from St Thomas's because I don't know how many of you are aware that their buildings are all being refurbished. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they've moved and uh, Edward, the Homeless Action Service have let them use um, Edward Street on Friday evening and that mm. seems to be working really well. So. Well, who knows, but that's our plan today. <laughs> well, be assured of our prayers as things evolve over the winter that whoever comes through the door I'm sure will be blessed by what we can offer here. So know that we're going forth into whatever the winter holds with, with our blessing yeah. and with our encouragement and all of that. So but thank you for sharing that with us. And, uh, um, as you can see, the, the cupboards are overflowing with all the generous gifts we've had already. So uh, um, I think the, the support is, is from churches across the district and in all that you do. So, yes. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. We realise that there is so much in our society that is broken and wounded. So as we turn to our prayers of confession, we offer up that brokenness, that woundedness to God, praying for his healing, his mercy and his compassion. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all, who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Knowing that God forgives us and strengthens us, we praise him in the words of the Gloria. Shall we say it? Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we continue in prayer. Lord, give us more charity, more self-denial, more likeness to thee. Teach us to sacrifice our comforts to others and our likings for the sake of doing good. Make us kindly in thought, gentle in word, generous in deed. Teach us that it is better to give than to receive, better to forget ourselves than to put ourselves forward, better to minister than to be ministered unto. And to thee, the God of love, be all glory and praise, now and forever. Amen. So we listen to our readings. Isaiah. 
O oh Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a rich feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, a rich food filled with marrow of well-matured wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all prophets, all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A second reading is from John. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. But this we shall know, that we are of the truth, and reassure our heart before him. For wherever our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and he knows everything. Beloved, in our heart does not condemn us. We have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit whom he has given us. This also is the word of the Lord. Thank you. As we prepare to hear the gospel, we listen to a piece recorded by the choir. It's a hymn called Jesus Christ is Waiting in the Streets. And it's from the Iona community, written by John Bell and Graham Moore.
That you can stand for the gospel, please. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, as we've, as we've heard, Homeless Sunday is when Christian churches of all denominations come together to express solidarity with those suffering from the crisis of homelessness. And it's also a time of practical action to take a stand and address the issue. Now you probably don't need me to tell you that homelessness has for years been nothing short of a national scandal. The visible tip of the homeless iceberg is the population of rough sleepers, the people we see begging in the streets or sleeping in doorways, the people who by and large the Christchurch night shelter exists to serve and has done for 28 years. A count done on one night in autumn 2018 estimated 4,677 people sleeping rough in England. That almost certainly a gross underestimate as it missed those sleeping in night shelters and places 
uh, such as public transport and in, in tents. Uh, when I tell you that the figure for Lancaster, the count for Lancaster was just four, you, you will see uh, how much of, uh, just how much of an underestimate it, it is. Uh, these figures represent a 165% increase since uh, 2010 in this wealthy country with the sixth biggest economy in the world. Polly Neat, the chief executive of the charity Shelter, blamed the combination of spiralling rents, a faulty benefits system and lack of social housing. Homelessness kills. The Office for National Statistics estimates that 726 homeless people died in 2018. Uh, that was a 22% increase on the previous year. And the average age at death was 45 for men and 43 for women. Life on the streets is very hard indeed. As I said earlier, the rough sleepers represent the tip of the iceberg. A major survey uh, undertaken by Shelter just before Christmas last year estimated that some 280,000 people in England are homeless. That's over a quarter of a million people. And uh, thousands more are at risk of, of homelessness. The true figure is higher even than that, since a lot of homelessness goes undocumented, including sofa surfing and some rough sleeping. Again, to quote Polly Neat of Shelter, as well as those facing serious ill health or even death, sleeping rough on our streets this winter, there are thousands of families trapped in grotty emergency babies with no space for children to sit and eat, let alone play. This is the grim truth our new government must confront and do something radical to change. Well, something radical and totally unplanned did happen just a few months later when the country went into lockdown and suddenly councils were given £3.2 million pounds to get homeless people into temporary accommodation. And I think, as, as Jan was describing earlier, I think our council did a fantastic job at that, at that time, finding accommodation for those, for those people. The government claimed that, uh, that over the whole country, about 15,000 people, including 90% of rough sleepers, were given accommodation where they could self-isolate. And whatever the, 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 the true figure, it's certain that many people, once, once they had a roof over their heads, were able for the first time to start getting their lives back together. You just can't do that when you're sleeping on the street. And it's essential now that as many as possible are helped into permanent housing. The government has promised more funding, including money to build new homes. And it just shows that when the political will is there, the resources can be found. It is a matter of priorities. People become homeless for many reasons. <clears throat> Job loss, relationship breakdown, uh, fleeing abuse. Th that's in this country. Looking at it globally, according to the UNHCR, 79.5 million people in the world have been forcibly displaced from their homes. That's 1% of the world's population. One in every 100 people on the planet. And this total includes 26 million refugees, around half of whom are children. 85% of them are hosted in developing countries, most of which are already affected themselves by food shortages. Many are living in squalid and overcrowded camps. The few, the very few, who reach these shores and claim asylum at least get temporary accommodation while their asylum claims are processed. 
And after sometimes very long delays, possibly going through legal appeals, they may get the good news that they have been granted leave to remain. In other words, they are now officially refugees. They are then given 28 days to leave their home office accommodation. That's four weeks, and in practice it's often less than that, to get their new ID, open a bank account, claim universal credit, and find somewhere to live. The problem is that they must wait five weeks for their first universal credit payment. Remember what Polly Neat of Shelter said about a faulty benefits system causing homelessness. It is at this point that many refugees become homeless and destitute, swelling the ranks of the street homeless. This hasn't happened in Lancaster yet, and I pray it never does. The organisation I volunteer with, RAISE, runs a project, Mind the Gap, that recruits local people, some of whom are in this congregation, who are willing to host a new, ref a new refugee in their home for a few weeks until they can get their benefits and find somewhere to live. However, as you can imagine, that's very difficult at the moment because of COVID-19 and the fact that some of our hosts are older or vulnerable people. The evictions are starting up again after a pause during lockdown, so we are just doing our best and hoping for the, the best. So, on Homeless Sunday, how did we, as Christians, respond to these complex and difficult issues? In today's Gospel reading, Jesus tells us very clearly that to serve him means to feed the hungry, welcome the stranger, and take care of people's immediate needs. And that, of course, is what the night shelter has been doing for homeless people every winter since 1992. However, it goes much deeper than just meeting people's physical needs, important though that is. We describe people as homeless, not houseless, implying that we need something more than four walls and a roof. As so many have found during the lockdown, being safe and warm out of the rain may be a very good start, but there is further to go. Home is something to do with a sense of belonging, a place where we can feel at peace with ourselves. I often wonder how refugees must feel trying to make a home for themselves here, far from their homeland, uh, in a place that must seem very alien as, as well as cold and damp. Perhaps the most poignant expression of homesickness in all of literature comes from Psalm 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. I have seen refugees weep for Syria, for the city of Aleppo, and for those they had to leave behind. The Bible has a lot to say about home. The Old Testament tells the story of how a people escaped from slavery and then wandered about in the wilderness for 40 years before finally arriving at the promised land, of their settlement of that land, their exile and return. However, there are also many references to God as our dwelling place, our home, especially in the Psalms. Psalm, 91, Psalm 90, uh, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Psalm 91, you who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. And of course, Psalm 23, I will dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. God is our spiritual home. The very beautiful collect we used last week uses words of, of St. Augustine. You have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. 
In John's Gospel, Jesus describes a sort of mutual indwelling between the disciple and God. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So abiding in God will enable us to bear fruit and that fruit, that living out of God's commandments to love and serve others will enable our deep relationship with God who is the source of all love. The passage we read in the first uh, letter of John that, that was, uh, what we read for us makes clear the kind of fruit that we are to bear. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. The apostle is describing a community deeply rooted in the love of God and showing that love in the way that they live. And that's the kind of church that we should be and which we can be by the power of the Holy Spirit. There are things we can all do. We can support international and national charities helping homeless and displaced people. We can put pressure through our elected representatives. We can put pressure on our government to give councils the resources to provide decent housing for everyone and put an end to homelessness. It can be done. We can call for an end to the hostile environment and demand that asylum seekers and refugees are treated with compassion and fairness. And we can open our hearts to those around us in need, supporting the night shelter in its new mission, supporting the food bank, feed, feeding, feeding the hungry, welcoming the stranger. And the king will answer, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Amen. <clears throat> so we stand to declare our faith in the God who abides with us and calls us his family. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So we sit as we continue in prayer.
Our prayers today were prepared by, by Jacqueline, our church warden. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for all our sisters and brothers who are homeless, for those sleeping under bridges, on park benches, in doorways or bus stations, outside high street shops and other inappropriate places, for those who can only find shelter for the night but must wander in the daytime, for families broken because they could not afford to pay the rent, for those who have no relatives or friends who can take them in, for those who have no place to keep possessions that remind them who they are, for those who are afraid and hopeless, for those who have been let down by our social safety net. For all these people, we pray that you will provide shelter, security and hope. We pray that those of us with warm houses not be lulled into complacency and forgetfulness. Lord Jesus, help us to see your face in the eyes of every person experiencing homelessness whom we meet, so that we may be empowered through word and deed and by your grace to bring justice and peace to those who are homeless. As we do this for your brothers and sisters, we do it to you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Almighty Father, bless all church leaders throughout the world. In the shame we experience at the cover-up of historic abuse, we are truly sorry for the way the Church of England has acted and commit to listen, learn and take action to make our churches places where all are safe from harm. Inspire and strengthen all bishops, priests, lay leaders and congregations throughout this diocese as we renew our determination to be a healthy church transforming communities. Help us to make disciples, to be witnesses, to grow leaders and to inspire children and young people. Let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth, putting our faith into action, serving our neighbour. We pray also for Andrea Juliet Stringer to be baptised on the 18th of October, and for Daryl Flynn and Helen Rawlinson, whose bands we will hear in the coming weeks as they prepare for their marriage. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for those who live and work in Hartington Street, Park Square, and those who support pe homeless people locally. For the Ark, the Mustard Seed, Lancaster and District Homeless Action, and for our own coordinators and volunteers working here this winter, and for all the guests who will find warmth, welcome and hospitality in this place. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for the action taken by the government in moving thousands of people experiencing homelessness off the street into hotels during the COVID pandemic, for the army of staff and volunteers from night shelter charities who continue to support those in hotels, those newly in accommodation and those who have unfortunately returned to the streets, and for the partnerships between local authorities, voluntary and charity organisations, faith and local communities working together to end people's homelessness. Help us to be aware that our neighbour needs love, community and someone to listen to their story and remind us that we could so easily find ourselves in their situation. Help us to commit to answer their plea for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you established your covenant with all humankind and all living organisms. Help us to steward your creation responsibly, particularly in preventing further damage to natural habitats. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you care for all your children. Comfort and strengthen those in any kind of need. Sustain the increasing numbers suffering from COVID-19 in our region and those caring for them. In our parish, we pray especially for Olive Nichols, Young Blood McCray, Ernie Wilson, Pat Brooks, Ivy Buckley, Michael Greenhalgh, Stephen Gardner, Eddie Barandino, Anne Gilbride, Sitar Rose, Thea Harris Ellis, Helen Rawlinson, Ed Bartosinski, and Patrick Hare. And we name in our hearts those whom we know to need your wholeness and healing. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Eternal Father, you welcome home those whose time on this earth is run. We pray for the souls of all who have died recently, especially Jack Rennington, Francis Clegg, Philip Marshall, Ron Goodwin, priest, Richard, Roy Long, William Bill Briggs, and Bill Buckley, David's father. Hold Ivy, David and Julie, and all Bill's family, along with Alwyn, Paul and Alwyn's sister, in your loving arms. Sustain them in their grief, with all who mourn the loss of loved ones, and wipe away every tear from their faces. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Therefore, rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Paulinus, Wilfred, Edward the Confessor, and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we stand to share the peace. <coughs> we are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. And also with you. We offer one another a word of God's peace. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your love shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, 
grants that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so in faith and trust we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. All are welcome at the Lord's table this morning to receive the bread. Jane, I think he's poised to bring some gel around to you to clean your hands with. But if you would prefer to receive a blessing this morning, do bring your order of service with you just so that I know what your preference is.
So we continue in the prayer. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, who loves all his children and is a home to those who are in need or trouble, inspire your church with the spirit of Christ's love. Empower us to battle injustice with compassion and to reach out to each person in need. Mm -hmm. Protect us and protect all people, especially the most vulnerable from COVID. Heal those who are sick. Give us your wisdom and your steadfast perseverance in this next season. And help us to live in the unity of the body of Christ as we follow you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. A few notices as we come to the end of the service. And firstly, a massive thank you for all of the donations that have been received um, as part of Harvest. Uh, the cupboards are groaning and we've sent a very generous cheque to the Olive Branch as well. So thank you for that. Um, those of you who would like to participate in the Boxes of Hope appeal, uh, there are details in the notice sheet about that. If I can ask that you bring your boxes by next Sunday at the latest, or drop them off at the vicarage, and then we can make sure that they make their way to Romania in time for uh, the festive season. Um, time is also rapidly approaching for the church's annual parochial church meeting. Um, so if you would like to nominate somebody for PCC, um, or if you would like to stand for PCC, there are forms available at the back. Do commend that to you. Um, and that will be after the service on the 25th of October. And if you'd like to join the electoral roll, stand up and be counted as one of the Christchurch family. Uh, there are forms there for that as well. There are a few more sign-up sheets as well at the back of church. Uh, firstly, if you would like a real Advent calendar with fair trade chocolate and the Bible story of the Nativity, there's a sheet there. And also, as we approach uh, the 1st of November, we'll be having our Eucharist for all souls. So if there is someone or someone that you would like remembering at that service who have died, however recently or however long ago, uh, do write their name on the sheet as well for remembrance. Is there anything else I've forgotten to mention? There are other good things on the notice sheet, so do read, mark, and inwardly digest that at your leisure. Okay. Shall we stand for the blessing? May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Thank you.